This whole summer so far, I've been incredibly active with my international baccalaureate cast work, with activities ranging from DJing a show at Scully's, to volunteering at my local food pantry, to filming professional athletes. I've learned a lot as a student and had a whole lot of fun doing it. I'm here to submit a video reflection highlighting some of the cool summer cast activities I've been doing. My summer started off with a bang. I wanted to make it a summer of the lifetime, so I immediately started adventuring, which was a common theme for the rest of my summer as a whole and fits perfectly under the action part of CAS. After my last exam on the last day of school, I joined up with my good pals Jack Klein, Mitchell Geist, Paige Martinsky, and Nate Deagle, and we went off to a local cliff jumping spot that I stumbled upon from last summer. Everyone I brought absolutely loved it, and four days out of the next week, we headed back to try new flips and nab some photos. The actual process of cliff jumping is very active as it is about a 15 minute hike to get there and then after we jump we have to swim to an exit area then take a hike another 5 minutes to get back to the initial jumping point. However my buddies and I really tried to incorporate creativity into this activity by trying new maneuvers off the cliff and by snapping creative photos of each other jumping off and of course my editing of them at a later point. I really gained a lot from cliff jumping this summer. Although I never proposed it as a cast activity initially, it was a highlight of my summer and taught me a lot. On top of getting physically stronger from hiking, climbing, and swimming, I also gained a lot of experience with my photography, properly framing action shots, working with the shadows, working with outdoor shots in general, and of course the post-production, coloring, and editing. I would gander to say I've already spent about 30 hours this summer doing this. Along with this early June activity, I was also fortunate enough to get to spend a lot of time this summer with my buddy Greg at his lake house on Apple Valley Lake in Ohio. Greg is an old ski friend of mine who moved to Colorado to go to school from New Albany last year. He came back for summer this year to live at his lake house, which he invited me to one night where we rekindled our friendship quickly. At Greg's place we managed to swim, wakeboard, wake surf, water ski, slackline, take photos, and so on. Wakeboarding and wake surfing were skills I never thought I was able to learn, simply because I didn't have access to them before meeting Greg. I was more than stoked when he invited me out to try it. Greg actually used to compete in regional wakeboarding contests and was an incredible instructor for me. Also at Greg's lake house, we set up my slackline, where it got tons of use. One of Greg and I's mutual friends, Mike, was up at Greg's place at the same time, and he taught me a lot more about slacklining. Mike also has a slack line and practices every day where he's picked up some serious skills. He taught me a lot of techniques such as how you're never supposed to look down while slacking, told me to never wear shoes so that your toes can grip the line, the proper way to walk on it, and proper starting techniques and so on. Another activity I did at Greg's Lake House was take more photos with aspiring photographer buddy Will Noble. We managed to take some really cool photos one night by experimenting with long shutter speeds and light painting. I learned a lot through working with Will, and here are some of the shots we came out with. Ultimately, after making numerous trips to Greg's Lake House, I can honestly say it was an awesome summer experience, which has allowed me to complete and elaborate on some cast activities in a new light. Greg had been venturing down to Columbus on Thursday nights ever since his return to Ohio in early May to meet up with old high school friends in New Albany. They would get together and head down to Park Street, downtown, where they would go to dance clubs. Greg tried to explain this to me, and he just said there was like a DJ who would more or less put on a dance party and he invited me out to join him one night on June 6th. I figured I might as well go ahead and be a little adventurous and check this out since he said it was a ton of fun and try to take notes of the DJ since it was a similar size event to the school dance which I'll be DJing here this upcoming winter. I had one heck of a time and learned one really important thing that night. Some people were dancing on stage accompanying the DJ and one of them bumped into his laptop and knocked the top shut. After about three seconds the crowd heard a loud beep and the music cut out. People were incredibly upset, but instead of immediately tending to his computer, which I would have done, he quickly ran to his bag, grabbed what I'm assuming was an adapter cable, and turned on some tunes from his phone. He knew his computer would take a minute or two to turn back on, and had clearly seen the situation before. 
I was incredibly impressed with how well he reacted to the situation and turned a potential two minute silence into about a 20 second silence. The music returned and people got back to dancing. On top of learning to expect the unexpected, I was also really neat to see a DJ put on a show for a crowd that didn't center around him. Previously I'd only been to shows where I knew the DJ's music because he was a producer and the main attraction that night. In this circumstance, people weren't there for him. They were there to dance, and he was the background part of the show. At this point in my summer, I'd already put in numerous hours to my cast project of starting a business for charity. Jack Klein is helping me out with higher ground, and by the second week of June, we had started our intense work. We received 700 woven labels with our logo on them from our supplier in India, and 48 five-panel hats from our hat supplier in LA. We started slaving away to stitch our logos onto the hats and market and sell the hats. This is all awesome and cast work, however I will not go into too much detail just because it is my main project and will be elaborated on soon. I did however decide to try to develop a new product for Higher Ground on June 9th that I will share with you because I think it's pretty neat and creative. My mom gave me some pretty cool floral print fabric and I decided to try to put it on a brim of a hat I had and sew it on as a custom pocket to one of my Oxford shirts. I watched some YouTube tutorials on how to do it and gave it a go. I learned a lot about sewing through messing up a few times and ultimately created a really cool hat and shirt that I still wear regularly. Here they actually are. When June 13th hit, Jack Klein, Mitchell Geist, Nate Deagle and I headed off to Chicago to experience what would be the best time of my entire life. June 14th through 16th was an electronic dance music festival held in Soldier Field in Chicago, Illinois. All of the top EDM producers from across the world gathered to put on a huge three-day, all-day concert and dance party across four different stages. I went with my friends because of my interest in DJing and didn't expect to learn a whole lot, just have a good time. However, I was incredibly surprised with how much I did learn. I learned some things that sound so basic, such as playing music that fits the crowd is so fundamental to putting on a banger show. Also, the more the DJ interacts with the crowd, the more energy the people will give back to the DJ. I saw some big name producers fail to do this and put on mediocre sets. I also saw smaller producers and DJ utilize these things and put on surprisingly incredible shows. My favorite DJ was Calvin Harris, even though I was not a huge fan of his music going into the show. He had absolutely mastered the art of both producing music that people wanted to hear and playing what people wanted to hear. Calvin Harris makes a lot of pop songs, which I'm not a huge fan of. However, during his set, he played more EDM-esque songs, which made the crowd go absolutely crazy. Even though this approach is not always appropriate for the venue, in this situation, it works absolutely perfectly. I will be able to use very few of these techniques when I play my shows because the crowd is significantly smaller and generally not all about the EDM scene. I totally understand that. However, if I wouldn't have gone on this trip and seen all the producers and DJs that I did, I may have thought that at my shows to just do what has been successful at medium sized venues that I have been to such as LC Pavilion, Newport, Scully, Sugar Bar 2, Pirate Street, Patio, etc. Words cannot even describe how much fun I had on this trip. There are so many incredible memories that we had on this trip besides just the DJ skills that I learned. Can't wait to go back next year. Here are some of the photo and video highlights from our trip. On June 20th, my brother took me on an adventure down to Zaleski State Forest. 
He was headed down to North Carolina on the 23rd to start his first year of medical school at UNC Chapel Hill and knew this would be one of my last chances to really spend some quality time with him for a long, long time. I'd never hiked or backpacked before, but he has some extra gear and showed me how. It was pretty easy and a super humbling experience. We ended up walking about three miles into the forest the first day, camping, and then four and a half miles out the next. The hikes were exhausting, but the night camping was incredible. I had an awesome conversation with my brother at the campfire. He is incredibly smart, knowledgeable, forward-thinking, intellectual, and kind-hearted, which made for a terrifyingly great conversation. We talked for a long time about my extended essay subject of cryokinite holes and global warming in general. We also had a long conversation about global health, which is what he really wants to focus on. He truly inspired me to do something awesome with my life. One crazy thing he said about global warming that blew my mind was said when our fire got pretty big. I told him that our fire couldn't have been good for the environment, and he responded with, well, it's theoretically neutral. He went on to explain how trees were effectively nothing but carbon tanks, growing by simply letting CO2 in the air pass by them and nabbing the carbon from them, and burning them just allowed the oxygen to reconnect with the carbon from the tree. It sounds so silly, but this philosophical look on tree growth really blew my mind at the time. Other than the awesome conversations we had and the bonding time I got with my brother, I was also physically beat by the end of it. Walking seven and a half miles through treacherous woods with 20 pounds on your back is pretty darn difficult. The day after returning from backpacking with my brother on June 22nd, he took Lucky, Shot, and I out for another little adventure. My brother took Lucky and I sailing on a super windy day. This was by no means a big part of my summer, however it was a fun action adventure that I will always remember. Lucky and I had sailed before, but never to a large extent. My brother retaught us the basics, then gave Lucky and I an FJ Cruiser sailboat to sail against the junior racing team from Leatherlips Yacht Club after we proved ourselves worthy. We completed two races. Unfortunately, we capsized three times in the first race. However, the second race we came back to get third out of six boats. Not bad. It was an awesome exercise and forced Lucky and I to really work together. I learned a lot and was pretty beat the next day from hiking on the boat and trying to rewrite it after capsizing. June 23rd would start my adventure to Ohio Dreams where I would spend the majority of my summer. Ohio Dreams is an action sports camp located near Butler, Ohio where campers come to skateboard, BMX freestyle, BMX race, mountain bike, scooter, snowboard, or ski. I was called on the first day of summer to come out to the camp and make their videos for all of summer camp as an unpaid intern. I reclined this offer, but instead proposed to come out to work for the first two weeks of camp. This would not only allow me to carry out my cast activity of photo and video editing, but also allow me to carry out my cast activity of summer skiing. I learned as my time at Ohio Dreams progressed that I would accomplish many more cast activities than just these two. On the first day of camp, I introduced myself to fellow staff members as Will Gibbons or Willie G, the cinematographer. One of the staff asked me loudly when I said that, what's a cinematographer? And from that point on, I was known as Cinnamon, the cinematographer, around camp. All the other staff were awesome, and I felt strangely like I was at home. I also met on the first day Tyler Bonner and Lewis Williams, who were two professional scooters from Oregon and the UK accordingly. The following week was absolutely incredible, as I went around all day filming action sports writers throwing down in their respective sports, and staying up until absurd hours to edit all the footage. The camp was set so that there was a ton of downtime to have fun and participate in activities, ranging from dodgeball, to tie-dyeing, to swimming, to slip and flying. My absolute favorite part about camp was the slip and fly, where the staff had set up a plastic sheet down the massive ski jump into a pool of water, sending kids flying 30 feet up and 40 feet out. Every day, Ohio Dreams allowed me new opportunities to try active sports and activities and progress my photo video skills. I was even allowed to incorporate things I'd love to do into camp. During nap time for the campers, I would set up my slackline for fellow staff members to use. We would session on the slackline every day while I had my massive PA speaker blaring out tunes. By week two, I'd already been accepted into a leadership role at camp. I helped the kids to and from lunch and dinner from main campus two thirds of a mile away. Working with the kids was so cool until I unfortunately injured my neck on the slip and fly attempting a double backflip. I ended up in the hospital and at home for a full day of rest. Luckily the injury was just muscle so I headed right back to camp when I was able. Week 2 finished but I was not ready to go home for good. The owner of the place and his wife really liked having me at camp, so they offered me a paid job working retail for them between 4pm and 9pm every day. I immediately said yes and stayed for the next week. 
Week 3 was ski week, so they had 14 skiers at 10. Working 4 to 9 allowed me to ski with the campers during the day, or head back to Columbus, and then work my shifts at night. As soon as I started skiing with the campers, the head ski coach asked me if I would help him out, as the kids liked me, and I was able of teaching most of the tricks. So week 3 I volunteered as co-head ski coach when I could. My skiing skills improved dramatically that week as well. I learned how to do all eight on a rail, which is basically all eight different tricks involving a switch up 270 combination off of a rail. I also taught some kids some really cool tricks and slacklined and took photos on the side when I could. While working retail, I decided to spice it up. The retail area is generally pretty boring, but I brought my computer and big speaker into it where I would blare some tunes. I called it Radio Dreams with your host DJ Willie G, and the kids absolutely loved it. I would play kid-friendly music until 8, where I would blare some dance tunes for the kids to get down to. I would DJ when there wasn't a line, and put on iTunes when there was. That area ended up being the hangout spot for all kids that were just a little too burnt out of writing. Week 3 ended and Ohio Dreams had hired someone to replace me because I told them I would only work retail for one week. Once again, I didn't want to go, and they didn't want me to either, so I stayed as an on-hand guy for week 4. A lot of this week was spent home, however I was there to help out Sunday on arrival day, Monday, Thursday, and Friday. I had one heck of a time at Ohio Dreams while still accomplishing DJing, slacklining, skiing, trampolining, photo and video editing, and service work by helping the little campers out as well. On the night of July 15th, during week 4 at Ohio Dreams, I came back to Columbus to see my longtime favorite producer and DJ, R.L. Grime, play a show at Scully's. We had a big Kilburn crew head down for this show, including Garrett Souders, Kevin Stovall, Sam Schaefer, Matt Lacey, Cameron Watson, Bryn Caswell, Annie Farkas, Emily Rodriguez, Nicole Viskolowski, and probably some others I'm forgetting. It was one heck of a show, and we showed up earlier than normal by my request to see some of the smaller name DJs perform. I once again learned a lot from watching them play their sets, and discovered some really cool music that night. I also had a chance to look at Scholars for the last time before performing there with Carter Grimm on August 6th. Overall, it was a fun night, and a cool opportunity to watch and critique other DJs. On July 16th, I got some pals together and we went to the park for a little slacklining. I rounded up Keegan Flaherty, Nate Deagle, Ben Lawson, Sam O'Hara, David Perrin, Joe Sapicchio, and Kevin Stovall, and we had a nice 2-3 hour slackline session. I had many of these throughout the summer, however this was by far the biggest and most fun. Everyone hopped on and I showed them my new skills I had learned at camp and encouraged them to try some. They all caught on pretty quick and we just had a nice, relaxed evening in the park. As an incoming senior, my parents sat me down at the beginning of summer and we had a very serious conversation about me in college and where I'd like to spend the next four years of my life. After a lot of research, I found a few schools I was pretty interested in. Included in that list was University of Vermont, University of Connecticut, University of Massachusetts at Amherst, which, if I went on a New England trip with my family, I could visit them all. We decided to go visit them and go on a family trip from July 25th to August 1st. Although I didn't complete as much task work on this trip, I was able to go check out four really awesome schools and get a better idea of where I wanted to go. I did luckily, however, get the chance to shoot a really cool sunset with my brother while on a ferry to Martha's Vineyard. Here are some of the photos I captured. Mid-June, Annie Farkas gave me a ring and asked me if I would DJ her graduation party, which I responded to with a definitely. On August 4th, I had one of my first gigs in front of people that I mostly didn't know. My job was pretty minor, but still, I didn't want to goof up. Annie told me in general it just had to be appropriate and sort of pop-ish music, so I really had to reach out of my comfort zone to find some adequate music. I ended up making a 7 hour long playlist for the 3 hour long grad party sure that I had enough music. I wasn't incredibly familiar with the songs because I didn't normally listen to pop music. This made mixing it pretty difficult. I also learned that seven hours of music is not adequate for a three hour long gig. I ran out of music around two and a half hours in and had to get a little creative. I did a combination of replay the songs I played at the start, figuring the people that had heard them had already come and left, 
and mixed in some longer house songs that were upbeat and not too EDM-esque. I ended up doing a pretty good job and Annie and her parents were ecstatic about my performance. I then DJed the after party where I could play more dancey songs of my choosing. I think all the preparation I had taken this summer really allowed me to succeed at this gig. It was an awesome experience and everyone ended up stoked. The morning after Annie's graduation party, I headed up to Ohio Dreams for week 7 of camp. Val, the owner's wife, called me and wanted me back to work for the rest of the summer. I told her I could only do week 7 so I could focus the rest of my time on summer work. I headed back not knowing exactly what job she would give me. Upon arrival, I learned that Nick Gepper, 2013 X Games gold medalist in ski slope style, had just arrived at camp where he would spend three days working with skiers on their tricks and just hanging out. Ohio Dreams management sent me down and told me my job for week 7 was to hang out with the skiers, help coach, and make a video of Nick for Red Bull USA. Nick has been a hero of mine for years, and it was so cool I had the opportunity to make a video of him. The week progressed and we all had a ton of fun. I gained some experience conducting interviews and filming b-roll shots. Overall, it was an awesome time and a highlight of my summer being able to work with Nick and coach skiing. My video will likely be posted on RedBullUSA.com here soon. August 6th, I headed to Scully's Music Bar and Diner to perform with Carter Grimm. I left my filming with Nick around 2pm in order to make it to Scully's by 5. We had a lot of time to prepare and chat with some of the other opening acts. I met a super nice kid named Drew Mayberry from Dublin Jerome who had a DJ set right after Carter and I performed. Carter and I did our thing and it was okay. We didn't do as great as we would have liked but we were both pretty new to the scene. It was only my second time DJing for an artist. Carter had sold 76 tickets to friends so luckily the crowd was still pretty into the music. I could tell everyone else in the crowd whom we didn't know was not having as great of a time, and simply that was because of our approach. Carter decided to rap over previously recorded songs. That made our set appear significantly less live. Carter also used songs that nobody had heard before, so no one could sing along. After the set was over, I stayed to watch Drew play, and he absolutely killed it. He inspired me to seek out gigs at Scully's myself. Ultimately, it was one heck of a fun night and a great learning experience for all. That pretty much concludes my summer cast work. I had an amazing summer and it was so great to be able to incorporate so much cast work into my summer. My work extended far beyond what I was able to briefly share here with you. My other free time was filled with more slacklining, DJing, photo and video editing, and volunteering at the Dublin Food Pantry on more than five separate occasions. I'm continuing to work at the Dublin Food Pantry as much as I can. I have been set up with a few more DJ gigs here as well. On August 24th, I will be playing for Ohio Dreams at the Action Sports and Music Fest all day. I will also be performing with Carter in September as well as doing the Winter Formal Dance this February at school. I really look forward to that. I also plan on signing up for the American Red Cross here soon to try to engage in more global issues and also volunteer with the Friends of the Homeless through my church. I'm actually also signed up to play hockey as well this winter and couldn't be more stoked. Can't wait to continue sharing my cast experiences with you. Thank you so much.